Okay, we are in the moon sphere of influence, and sure enough, we've lost our periapsis again. Uh, so let's try and regain it first before doing anything else. Uh, that's probably a better way to go. Yeah, I think uh, we'll do this uh, trivial burn. See how we're doing. My electric charge is fine. Shows my periapsis going down. Well, let's let's trust it here. Oh wait, no no, this is totally wrong. What have I done? Okay. Wish this uh, little computer system had an opposite of node thing. Oh well. So this is what 67 ish. So add 180 to that and you get 247. Let's see. Well, this seems to be working out better, though I'm not quite holding it. I'm trying to get it in the right position, but come on. Okay, that's good enough. Hopefully that'll be enough for low over the moon. Now let's add a maneuver to get into orbit. And see how much orbit will take actually. Yeah, uh, it wasn't too much because, uh, as I saw before, the the path we were taking around the moon was basically very, very suggestive of an orbit already. So we can get in pretty tight, I think. We'll keep one end loose, but not that loose. Yeah, I think this will do. So let's find our maneuver and do the complete opposite of it. Well, let's let's go get to the right time. It should be uh, prograde for us. Uh, it's really retrograde, but um, because we're on the opposite side, prograde. Oh, well, let's see where the moon is so we can watch it come in. We should be able to do some science here, but let me get it burning first. Alright. Let's see. How about gravity? Midlands? Uh, looks fine to me. Let's upload that data. Trying to make sure my periapsis doesn't get too low. Let me try and angle that right. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, did we actually upload all of it? Yeah. Uh, well, let's gather some of what we came to gather, right? Uh, that's up here. Ooh. No, no. Yeah, probodyne. So, low orbit readings. Oh, alright, uh, let's uh, activate data recorder. 
Good. In space low, I wanted to see that. And we have to have some space left in the data recorder because we're probably going to get some in space high stuff too. Okay. 300 science. Transmit. Definitely. Transmit the data. Let's deactivate the day recorder. We don't need any more low stuff. And we're continuing to get into orbit. Very nice. Actually, this is enough of an orbit, I think. I don't want to overdo it, do I? Let's burn a little bit more. 300 science added, we got the full score, okay. Let's consider this situation. We're gonna need to go back home after all. And we need the high readings, so in order to get the high readings I really should just stop it here. I don't know how far out high is technically. For for Kerbin slash Earth is pretty high. It's beyond uh, geosync. So let's go around here. We will lose connection on the opposite side of the moon. That's unavoidable. But now, are we high in space over the moon? That is the question. Yes, we are. Okay, great. So we'll try and get the samples this time. Okay, we have the samples. Let's keep the data and deactivate the data recorder. Uh, wait, that didn't work. Deactivate the data recorder. Okay, we are fully loaded on that stuff, but we could probably do some more gravity. Uh, we've done that one. Uh, not, uh, well, I mean, uh, we should be hitting some crater sometime, right? Let's see. Let's see about plotting back for home, though. We don't have to. As long as this mission works out, we don't have to worry too much. We can. We can aim for future missions with the same probe. But we do have to get back home. That's getting there. Again, we might need to bounce off the atmosphere a bit in order to burn off some speed. I think this will do. Uh, we've got plenty of Delta V for it. Oh, this is superb. Well, let's see. We've got an hour and 42 minutes. Are we going to hit anything before that? I guess we'll be over this crater, aren't wouldn't we be? Let's see. Okay, let's try some science experiments here and then start burning. Oh, uh, we only had a little bit left. Uh, that's the same crater we've hit before, I guess. Temperature scan can't be done right now. Barometer will have to wait until we get back home. Okay, I guess that's that's the idea. Let's try and get back home. So basically I should be aiming for my retrograde vector. All right. Let's see if we're over a different biome now. No. But we can definitely put a probe in orbit around the moon, maybe in a polar orbit, and uh, just really get all the data we can, put a whole bunch of little gravi gravioli detectors. We'll see about that.
So yeah, this is actually the actual for city that we left stranded. So maybe if I add the cloth, this is 23.5. That would definitely be something to retrieve and bring back down. But it'll be a little bit trickier with the particular mod combination I have here. Or since I, there's no way I can install a Kerbal attachment system in this set of stuff. Uh, it would crash the program. Uh, but, but there are other techniques that we could use. There's no doubt about that. I sure don't like it hanging out there. The thing is, I know I'm not pointing in quite the right direction. The, the maneuver must have shifted a little bit, and so we're not getting quite as much efficiency as I should be. So I am aware of that. But I think we'll be fine. Okay, I actually can see the maneuver is sort of coming around here, but let's get rid of all that. Uh, 70 might be a little bit too deep. Let me go to the other side and boost it to maybe 75-ish. Maybe even 80. Oh, okay, well this is a little bit touchy. I didn't think it would be that. This is where RCS might be handy. Okay, I'm gonna go with 80. And that's, uh, so we're, we do plan to go around instead of uh, going straight down. All right, so now we get to leave the Moon Sphere of Influence. Let us proceed. Uh, electric charge is diminishing a bit, so we're probably oriented wrong, but I'll fix that right now, actually. <laughs> I don't want to um, risk anything at this point now that we are on the, on the precipice of victory here. Okay, that should be good enough. Okay, getting a little bit of lagginess occasionally as the computer has some trouble keeping up with me with all this stuff going on. Where, oh, where is Kerbin? Well, it's getting closer somewhere. Oh, I think that there it is. There it is. So you can sort of see it glinting. Or maybe not. Ooh, 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 whoa, 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 that came way quicker than I thought it would. Hey, what the heck just happened? Who? Okay, um... Hey, uh... Help me out here. Um... What do I want? I don't want any of these. Uh... Not... No, not... No, the other way around. Yet, uh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh, this is not good. I need to be able to spin around. We are not going in the right direction here. Uh, let me close this antenna. A uh, naughty couple. Uh, no. Uh, oh, I've got action group to two. I think. Holy crud. Uh, right. Deactivate. Okay, good. 
Commutron 16 should survive in this. Okay, so we are in the right direction. Okay, thankfully. Alright. All sort of kind of good. We need to do barometer readings, right? Yeah. A lot of pressure data. <sighs> Come on, we are in the atmosphere. It's just not fair. Let me get rid of this. I was very surprised. It suddenly come up, it came up at me. Whatever. 30 seconds to periapsis. We should be alright. Got some heating. Okay, good. We're going up again as planned. Still bleeding off speed and reducing our apoapsis. We are still connected. Commutatron 16 is still is still attached. Good. I'm actually amazed how well my CompSat system is working, considering it was com largely haphazard. Um, yeah, it's it's quite impressive. Happy with that. Okay, I think we can time warp now. Fortunately, if you, as long as you keep your orientation, if you were oriented properly in the first place, then as you go around the planet, you will still be oriented properly as we are now. Now, uh, the issue is whether our little auto always on antenna will work. Now, was it 500 km? I don't think it was 500 kilometers. I think I'm thinking about default. What is it around here? I mean, uh, stock. Uh, unfortunately, the antenna is on the side that I didn't put the lights on. Or is it? No, no, it's on, on the side I have the lights on, yeah. Uh, 5,000 kilometers, all right. And we are currently connected through HITOS probe. Actually, that's not a bad thing. Uh, HITOS probe is under 5,000. It's, uh, though that's 5,000, yeah. Well, that's its altitude, actually, our, our angle is, but it should be fine. We should be able to maintain communication through it. That's fine. Okay, so I think we'll be able to pop the chutes in time. So it's just a matter of survival at this point. We're bleeding off speed well. Okay, we're approaching periapsis and it looks like we'll be able to bleed enough speed to bring our apoapsis into the atmosphere. Let's see. Not a guarantee, but it's doing well. we still got the connection that I was looking for. Though it's, it's pretty stretched at this point. It might be a bit of a horizon problem. We're going up now. But the question is whether we'll stop going up before we leave the atmosphere. That well, looks like we're in good shape. Bleeding off speed nicely. Everything is looking copacetic, nominal even. Yep, here we go. The camera changed. Now hopefully, oh well. The camera changed and so did our connection situation. Bermuda is a little bit high. But I guess we can't get a direct line of sight to high toss. It's 
a little bit high, but I think the ranges are additive or something like that, so maybe you'll still be alright. Or there's some... Uh, yeah, I, I'm still trying to figure out how the ranges work. There is an equation for how the ranges should work that Nathan Kell mentioned in a comment, but I'm still not entirely sure how to switch it to that. So, haven't done that yet. Another thing I haven't done is uh, I I haven't figured out whether I want to do real delay, signal delay, uh, based on the speed of light. I'll think about that, but it would be it could be very very ding. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Right now, doing stuff with the moon, it's not uh, that critical. But doing interplanetary missions, I I don't know whether I want to go to that level of re realism. I guess I do in some ways, and then I also don't in other ways. Uh, there's a fine line between challenge and and tedium that I have to strike with myself. Now then we go again, and we've bled up, bled off quite a lot of speed already. We're we're in good shape. Okay, now is it gonna concede I'm in the atmosphere? Let's see now, where's my... That's... Well, let me see if I've... Uh, okay. That's not a thing. Log pressure data. Okay. Alright. Uh, let's just keep that with us. It's not biome dependent though, so once we've done the upper atmosphere, that's it for the upper atmosphere. G force is rising, but uh, based on the speed we bled off initially, I think they shouldn't rise to critical levels for these parts. Yeah, I know I can uh, pre-initialize the shoots, but I do want to see that I can maintain connectivity. After all this effort put into the ComSat system, I think it would be a shame if I couldn't maintain connectivity. And you saw the Commutron blew off, and we've still got connections, so we're we're in good we're in a good situation right now, and that's how it should be. Now there's going to be a bit of a jerk as we release the chutes because it'll turn the whole vehicle around since the chutes are on this side and right now it thinks this side is the heavy side so it'll flip around I think. Not too sure what's got oriented in this direction but I'm getting ready to release the chutes and yeah I think we're good to go with that. Okay, SAS off. Don't try and hold it, SAS. Let the thing flip around. Or, well, if the chutes can manage it, let them flip it around. Oh, they're sort of tugging, but it's not flipping. We're going pretty slow, even... Uh, despite being at such a high altitude. That's interesting. Didn't expect that. Let's keep, get this going here. I guess this body has some aerodynamics on it that's making it go like this. It looks like we're over water. Uh, based on the fact that the altitude, true altitude is lower than the the altitude we've above sea level, so that means that we're talking about the ocean floor in that case. So we're over water. That's okay. 
Okay, come on, shoots. Oh, I hear some... Yep, there we go. Swing it around. Nice and easy, very slow. No need to worry about anything. Obviously, opposite direction because that's just how things are right now. And hopefully it'll settle down nicely. Oh wait, uh, we, we can do a barometric uh, reading here, can't we? Is this the one we've... no, we haven't used this one. Okay, let's keep that. Continue. Oh, tumbling, tumbling, tumbling. Okay, settle down, you. Okay, and there you have it. 482 science of that. Uh, we transmitted some, right, with the graviton, uh, gravioli detectors and all that. Uh, and also the one uh, sample, not sample, the, the reading. Th these are the samples here. These were uh, kept. And so we've not only got the 482 science, but we also got a few hundred other science. Because you remember I only had a trivial amount of science before. And now we've got all this other science gathered thanks to this mission. So, finally success. I'm not going to decide how to spend it uh, right now. I think I'm satisfied that we, we were successful uh, with the Heinlein mission. And we can do further missions around the moon with, uh, with the intent to gather all the remaining science. But, but I think next time we have to aim to land something on the moon. And we've got the seismometer and so... All is well with that mission in terms of the science that we plan to get. And maybe we'll even slap some goo containers depending on what I uh, use this science on. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.